All right, so we got this Cayman. This is a 2007 with a large IMS bearing. I get this question asked a lot. What do you do when you have a large intermediate shaft bearing that cannot be replaced without disassembling the engine? So I wanted to answer that question. The bearing could only be replaced if the engine is fully disassembled. So this is your case halves. They have to be split. The whole engine has to come apart. You can replace this bearing. I would definitely replace it with a solution if the engine's coming apart. I would not put the ceramic ball bearing back in it. It's a wearable component. Now, as you notice, you can see the cage and the ball bearings because we removed the raised seal. The reason why we do that is from the factory, these are filled with grease and there's a seal that's supposed to seal the grease inside. The problem is that grease eventually leaks and basically bleeds out the raised seal because the raised seal will contract and shrink over time from heat. Basically all the grease gets washed out and now you have a bearing that's not properly being lubricated. The solution to that is you take the raised seal off and now you have splash lubrication that's way better than not having any lubrication at all. Now, not saying that that will prevent a failure from ever occurring. Now, there has been several of these recorded now starting to fail and being a problem. I believe about six in the United States. So the failure rate is actually very small, but it's still a concern. So what we do is once we do that modification, the best thing to do is install a magnetic drain plug, which this one has and pretty much every oil change monitor for debris or metal. If you start getting ferrous metals, that would be a alarm of concern. We also installed the LN Engineering screw-on filter. This one, we haven't installed it yet, but basically that will catch all your metals and it'll contain it in the screw-on style filter. These are not so good because they can bypass metal uh, if they get clogged. So I would advise going that route if you have a 997.1 naturally aspirated car, a Boxster, a Cayman that still has the dual roll bearing. That's pretty much your only option unless you want to disassemble the engine. And most folks don't want to disassemble the engine. That's a lot of work. But that's what we do to have the customer monitor it and then prevent it from failing. On this particular car, this car, I actually own this vehicle. I bought it from a customer because it had issues with the transmission, so we're putting another unit in here. Uh, we're doing the raised seal, and then the rear main seal is gonna get replaced because it had a Victor Rhines and that thing was leaking. We put only originals. It's also gonna get a brand new water pump. The water pump was actually leaking. Another problem is the impellers break. It's gonna get a new thermostat. So we're gonna go through this whole car and we're getting ready to put it up for sale. A customer vehicle that he just did not wanna put money into. It was the end of the road as far as putting any more money in this vehicle. But he bought it and nothing has been done on this vehicle. So we're gonna go through it. Here's our transmission unit. And we're gonna install the flange with the new ring. And then there's also an O-ring on the inside at the single row IMS section right there, bearing. So you gotta do this if you wanna make sure you have splash lubrication i recommend doing it when you have your clutch and flywheel removed when you're servicing that obviously don't do it yourself take it to a shop that knows what they're doing we're actually a certified shop for porsches bearings and engines so we do this every day but you have to lock up your engine bank one bank two after you lock it up you have to remove all your tensioners it locks on and then crank has to get locked up as well so bank one bank two, all those components get locked up. That way your timing chains don't slip when you're doing the work and then the tensioner on the IMS and on the bank uh, one, pretty much get replaced. On the Carrera car, 911's bank one is actually gonna be on this side because the engine's flipped, so don't get that mixed up. This is just for demonstration. Well, obviously you can see that we also put a brand new starter because the starter was really, really having a hard time rotating the engine. We have a brand new AOS. Another thing that we upgrade is on some of the earlier models, you have the, your Vario cam adjuster, which is this unit here. And you have these bolt designs. So these are, here's the retaining, these are locks that lock the washer and then you have a special tool that holds it. 
Here's the early design that's known to come loose. And here's the new design. These were like 2002, 2003 boxes, 2002 911s. They had a couple year run and then they went to this design. It actually has a compression type ring. And when you tighten down this bolt and then you torque to yield it, it locks it in place. They will come apart on this model if it's misshift or over rev. And this will rotate and then your timing is going to be out. And if it rotates enough, sometimes the bolt comes loose completely and uh, your timing chains like this one uh, get destroyed. So this was one we, we did some work on that had this issue. So keep an eye out for that. We always recommend using a shop that's uh, specialized in these vehicles and knows what they're doing. Because you don't want somebody that doesn't know the little ins and outs and to come with some of these repairs because you want to get everything replaced while you have this transmission removed because you don't want to be fixing it twice or especially having your engine explode because something was missed. Uh, there's a lot more to mention. The ceramic bearing that Porsche incorporated in all the 2006 and up vehicles. Also the lawsuit cars had this same bearing incorporated in the early 996, 986 vehicles. So look out for that. Some of the vehicles with the M96.2 variant engine with the Vario cam system. Even 2003s can have a single row, large non-replaceable bearing if the engine has been replaced when the vehicle had a class action lawsuit. So keep that in mind too. Most of the time up to 2005, early 2005, they still have a single row small bearing and it can be replaced retrofitted with the IMS solution bearing. So just keep that in mind guys, when you're buying one of these. Now, sometimes I've had customers tell me, hey, I had my bearing replaced. And a lot of times they'll go in and install a bearing that's replaceable with the ball bearing. Keep in mind, there's a service life for that. LN Engineering bearing has about a, I think it's a 40 year, 40,000 mile interval on the single row and then on dual it's five year, 50,000. I recommend changing those at about a four year interval. But the best solution though is getting the IMS solution, which is the oil fed also provided by LN Engineering. They provide the IMS solution as well. And that bearing has a, a lifetime service life. There's no service life on it, which is really nice. You install it once, you pay a little more upfront, but then you don't have to do it again. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope this video answered some of the questions that I've had recently. Like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.